very good morning and welcome to the Ladies Club. Welcome into our lounge and thank you so much for being with us as we shine the spotlight on women who are making waves when it comes to sport in the country. And I use that term lightly because today we're focusing in on water sports. But before we do that, we like to get the show underway with an inspiring quote. And this one comes from a downhill mountain bike rider. She said, never ignore your instinct and you can always push harder. I get inspired when I think about people who have pushed their bodies to the limit. That's a quote by Rachel Atherton. Atherton is a pro downhill uh, mountain bike cyclist from England. She's a four-time world champion and five-time World Cup Series winner. The Laureus World Sport Award winner in 2016 set an unprecedented record. She won each and every single event in the World Cup Series that year. And I love her quote because it uh, speaks to limits. And they say that you never know how far you can go until you have gone that far. Because things will be good and things will be bad and then things will get absolutely terrible. But when they're at that point, then you know that it's not the end and it's not time to give up just yet. Now on the show today, we zone in on a woman who are pushing boundaries in surfing. You're welcome to join in the conversation. So easy, share your views on Twitter at sport at SABC. Just use our hashtag, hashtag the ladies club. And then we also on Facebook, it's very easy, SABC sports. Just remember our hashtag, hashtag the ladies club. Let's introduce our game changer for today. She's a woman who's excelling in surfing, a sport dominated by men, and also one that has a certain race that it favors, especially here in South Africa. So Makila Siwe Ekele has, since her childhood, had a love for water sports and was introduced to surfing by surfer and board shaper from KZN, Jason Rubink. In 2015, she became the first black South African woman to compete in a professional surfing event, the Belito Pro. And she also got her best result at the competition, ending in ninth spot. She's a role model for budding black surfers. Samakile Siwe, or otherwise known as Samu, she joins us now. Very good morning and welcome to the Ladies Club. Morning. Thanks. Just explain how it all happened, because I know that Jason, who was friends with your dad, was your entry into the surfing world in South Africa. Yes. But tell us what it was like to actually learn how to surf. Um, learning how to surf for me, I didn't take it seriously back then when I was a grum, because I didn't know much about it. I just thought, OK, I'm doing fun water sports. Since it has water, it's, you know, it includes water, it's fun. So I didn't mind doing it. Like, I, I could surf the whole day and just get burnt by the sun and just not really care, you know, I had fun. That was really fun for me to, to, to start surfing. So where did this love of water actually come from? Um, I could say it came naturally because I used to be a really good swimmer and I loved being in the water, basically. And then... When you first started learning how to swim and you thought, okay, this is fun, I get to spend more time in the ocean, what made you take that next step to then actually go and compete? I was introduced um, to competitive surfing by Sandili. He actually pushed me to go and, and surf contests yeah, just for fun. You know, not, I didn't take it seriously. Just like I said, it, it was just a thing that I used to do, and then um, I got results, and I started, you know, taking it seriously, and I, I did it for results and good results, and I wanted to show people that it's not only a certain uh, part of people that can do this, you know, everyone. You being the first black South African woman to compete in a professional surfing event in 2015. Can you take us through that experience and what that was like? Because you were still young then. I was still young. Um, I didn't know what to expect. I just thought, OK, I'm going to surf this big event, apparently. I didn't know it was big. Like, uh, there were Brazilians, um, Australians, and I just thought, OK, I'm just going to have fun and just not think about other people. And so basically for me, it felt like a normal contest, but I didn't know it was huge. <laughs> <laughs> and then you went up against Heather Clark. Yeah. I, and did you, did you know who she was then or did you only find out afterwards? I only found out 
afterwards. <laughs> An unlikely journey in surfing and she's managed to achieve so much and it's afforded a, a new path for her. We'll continue speaking to Simon Kilesiwe Kele after the break. Remember, we're on Twitter at sports at SABC. Just use our hashtag, hashtag the ladies club. We're back after the break. Now, I feel Sam has a hell of a lot of potential. But, you know, she's, she's at that teenage stage now and uh, there's a lot of things that are going through her mind and I feel she's feeling the pressure. I would like for her to actually train pretty much every day, you know, but for her it's, it, gets, it, it is tiring. You know, being in the water, getting thrown around and tossed around by the waves, is, it, it's not that easy, you know, it's tough, it's hard work. <laughs> identified by Surfing South Africa and Etiquini Surfing four years ago. I didn't really stand up the first time I went out, but I wanted to come the next weekend to try again. And she's just shown potential throughout the years. Welcome back and thank you for staying with the Ladies Club. We still have Sam in studio. We're going to continue our conversation with our game changer in extreme sports. But before we do that, let's uh, shift our focus to today's trailblazer. Today's trailblazer is none other than Bianca Beitendach. Bianca was born in Victoria Bay in the Western Cape of South Africa. She grew up near, a be near the beach of False Bay, just outside of Cape Town. With her father's encouragement, she learned to surf at the age of eight with her two brothers. The talented South African made her first international mark at the age of just 17 years old by being crowned the Billabong ASP World Junior Champion. The following year, she started competing full-time on the WQS Tour. And then by 2013, she qualified to compete on the Championship Tour, which is the elite part of the tour. But in 2015, she lost her father unexpectedly. That very same year, though, she finished the year fourth in the world. She's currently ranked in the world's top 20, and she continues to fly the South African flag for women surfing on the global tour. That's our trailblazer for today. And I'm going to bring the conversation back to you, Sami. Who is your role model, and who really inspires you? I'd say Mick Fenning inspires me when it comes to surfing. He's, like, really good. He's got so much of power in his surf and speed, and he's got so much control. He's just really good. Nothing, there's nothing more I can say about it. So, um, and Jordy Smith, he's is a proud South African. I'm proud that he's South African and he's doing really well in, in the surf industry. Now, South Africans have been doing well when it comes to surfing. We've had a two world champions in Sean Thompson and Wendy Boerter back in the 70s and the 80s. But we need another world champion. And I heard once upon a time that when you started surfing, when you were 14 years old, that was your big dream. You wanted to be a world champion. Yeah, I, I guess things seem simpler back then. I thought it was just going to be a one, two quick, easy steps, but it's, it takes a lot out of, out of surfing. It takes a lot emotionally, physically, everything. You just have to focus. So it just has to work hard, <laughs> I guess. Do you enjoy just going out and surfing in your own time rather than competing? I do enjoy surfing in my own time. It is tiring, but it's fun. But competing, it gives you an adrenaline rush so uh you just you just have to focus and just make sure you got all the equipment whatever you need is there surfing is just another tough sport so you just have to be tough yourself <laughs> uh, tell us i there was a movie that was made about you by uh, some rhodes university students and in the documentary you speak about feeling ostracized or feeling left out sometimes um, because you were the only black surfer. Tell us what it's like to, to be in a sport where it's mainly dominated by another race group. Yeah, there are times where I feel a bit left out sometimes. But it's like, I think, I don't know, I feel it's better that way. 
to do your own thing and just focus on yourself instead of other people. Remember, you can get involved in the conversation on Twitter at sport at SABC. Just use our hashtag, hashtag the ladies club. So Sam, you have taken a bit of a break this year. You want to focus on training. Yes. Tell us what the big idea behind that is. I lost a bit of focus because of growing up, you know, um, being around the people I hang out with, I suppose, uh, peer pressure, etc. So I guess this year I'm just going to take a little break and just train as hard as I can so I'd come back next year and ready to surf every event that's going to come through. What keeps you motivated to continue surfing and con to continue doing contests? I want to make a difference. I, I really... Even if... Like, I don't have to be a world champion necessarily. Like, I, I just want to surf an international event somewhere else, not in South Africa, and just make a difference, I suppose, and just have people to know that it's, it's not only certain people that do this. You know, everybody can do anything, anything at all. You don't have to limit yourself because you are the one that makes the boundaries that you set for yourself. We're going to continue our conversation in the final part of today's Ladies Club after the break. Well, I want more Zulu girls to start surfing, to be introduced to these kind of things, because they can make a career out of these. They can earn a lot, and it's fun to do something that you love. What's a big plan for Sam? I want to be the world champion. I know it's something that's very far, but if I just focus and put my mind to it, I can do it. Welcome back to the Ladies Club. We have our game changer in studio, Sam Kele. She's a surfer and she has been surfing for the last six years. At 19 years old, she says she's taking a break in 2018 to just focus on her training so she can come back better in 2019 to achieve her goals. Sam, We've got some visuals of you actually surfing. Can you tell us what it's like? For, for so many people, they only dream of being able to get up on a surfboard. I'm one of them because I've tried this thing once or twice, but I just fall flat on my face. Surfing is so much fun. It's so much fun being in the water and just enjoying yourself. Uh, that is if you take it just as a, as a hobby, not as a competitive sport, because that's when it gets tough. Just tell us uh, how tough it is, really, to be able to maneuver that board and to cut into the waves and to be able to score, you know, the, the type of scores that you need to, to go far in a competition. You need, you, need, you need to plan before a contest. You can't just go in there and just expect to do something. It needs time and everything. And you also need a knowledge of the ocean, don't you? You need to know which waves to pick out. And that yes. takes time of actually being in the ocean. How long did it take you before you felt like you really knew the ocean, that you could pick out those good rides? Not too long. Uh, I'm a fast learner. So it didn't take forever for me to, to learn uh, how to surf, because you know I have passion for it. So. It wasn't that hard. When you're not doing anything, what do, what do you do to, to relax? I read when I get time. Well, when I get time every night. I, I go to the studio with my brother, Selu, and my cousin, Mle, and just record a couple of songs sometimes. I sing for fun. And they want to drop a song on Instagram. <laughs> so, yeah, I do that when I'm relaxing. Um, can you share 
a, a verse with us? No, you can't share a verse <laughs> with us just yet. And I understand that you're studying fashion now. Why fashion? These days they call it swag up. I, I guess I like to swag up <laughs> sometimes. But yeah, basically, I wanted to be a model not so long ago. So uh, making clothes for models would actually bring me, I think, a step closer to what I actually wanted to do. I wanted to do modeling, but because I'm short, I, I just couldn't. So rather make clothes for models. I, it's fun. It's really nice. What would you... Where do you see yourself in five years' time? I'd love to get good results in international events, uh, really good results. Uh, and I'd really love to learn how to do an A one day. <laughs> an aerial maneuver. <laughs> It's, it's so funny because people watch it and they think, oh, that's so easy. I can, yeah. just, yeah, I can just pick up a board and do that. How many times yeah. have you heard somebody say that to you? Oh, that's a lot that's of times, easy. a lot of times. They think it's so easy to just do uh, a basic cutback, but it takes your, the core from your stomach to your arms, to your head, to your legs, to everything. It takes a lot. Your feet have to be placed right. Yes. Your, you can feel it in your calves, you can yes. feel it in your... Everywhere, your arms, everything. So explain to the viewers what a cutback actually is so that they can also understand a little bit of the surfing jargon. You try to ride your wave just like in the middle to the top so you can come around and cut back towards the foamy and come back. And then it lets out this beautiful spray, doesn't yes. it? Yes. <laughs> and that's where the points are. Yes. <laughs> how big is your spray and how strong was the surf? What is your favourite time to, to actually go out and surf? What, what time of the day do you enjoy being in the ocean? In the afternoon and the morning. Because during the day, the sun burns like crazy. <laughs> What's your favourite break that you've surfed in South Africa? Jeffreys Bay was the best. But... Besides the, the reef and everything, Jeffreys Bay is just perfect. Tell us what it's like to actually surf in Jay Bay. It's known globally as one of the best breaks in the world. But for a novice and for people learning how to surf, it's a very scary place to actually go and surf. So tell us what it's like to surf in Jay Bay. Surfing in Jay Bay is so much fun. The water is, the water there, it's, it's a little bit cold in Durban, but it's bearable. The, the waves there are just so perfect. They run throughout the, the, the point, the point break. It, it's so perfect, it's amazing. That's how so many people just go down there and just surf for fun. What is your advice to, to other people that say, you know what, I'm, I don't want to go into the water because I'm just scared of being in the water? What do you say to them? I just tell them to relax and just don't panic. Because if you panic, you're going to drown. And that's where the problem starts. Basically, nothing much. <laughs> <laughs> if you could have a date with anybody in the world, who would it be? It would be Rihanna. She, I look up to her. She's, I feel like she's smart. Like, if I'd meet her live, I'd, I'd actually know what's going on in her mind. And... She, I guess you'd give me a couple of advisors about life and everything. So when you're feeling down, you know, like, oh, I don't feel like going to train today, but I know I have to go out, you know, I, or like, I don't really feel like finishing this assignment or I don't feel like going into the studio. Mm. What, is, what is that word of motivation that speaks to your heart that makes you say, you know what, I'm going to get up and I'm going to go and do this? Sometimes I do feel like I have people that look up to me, so I have to do this for them. So I guess doing it for the people makes me want to do something. Let's imagine you get stranded on an island. There are some waves on the island, so you, you've got your surfboard with you. But what are the three things that you can't live without and that you need on this island to survive? I'd need God everywhere and my phone and maybe some sunblock <laughs> i think those three would check the list pretty well 
Sam, thank you so much for coming into the studio. We wish you all the best of luck in the year ahead. Uh, train hard. Let's ho we, we pray that you don't have any injuries and you come back stronger and better in 2019 on the waves in South Africa. Thank you. That's a game changer for today. Remember that greatness is never given, it's always earned. Until we meet again, goodbye. I don't really know what the future holds for me, but I'm looking forward to it.